Hello, in this tutorial you will learn how to build your machine learning model in Spark, train it and understand main aspects with these steps you are seeing here. Let's go! Before starting, in order to understand what you will do, I suggest to clone this repository and follow the steps one after one you will see in this tutorial. This is our notebook where at the very top I import extension black, which will make my code more readable if necessary. So here is our notebook, train machine learning model with Spark, and let's do it. We start our notebook by importing main dependencies we will use through this tutorial. It is Spark session, SQL function as F, and SQL types as T. Next, we are ready to turn on our Spark engine by Spark session. For this, I am using get or create function to Spark variable. What is Spark session? And what is then Spark context? Let's start the explanation with a single user right here. Let's assume I want to work with Spark, and for this reason, I connect to a workspace where Spark can be executed. The main component in this workspace is a Spark context. Spark context is the primary point of entry for Spark capabilities. So every command that we want to execute in Spark goes into Spark context. Spark context is supported by Spark cluster driver. The driver runs your functions, sits on a node in the cluster and is responsible for three things. Responding to user program or input, analyzing and distributing, scheduling work across the executors. For us, we focus on the last one, scheduling work across the executors. What is executor? The worker node that helps in running individual tasks by being in charge of a given Spark job. Ok, then what if we have not a single user, but let's say three individual users, or any number of multiple users. They want to use the same cluster, but run only their queries, they want to have their own properties, use only their tables and do their specific task with Spark API. The good idea should be to have individual Spark context to each user. Each Spark context would be an isolated application for a user inside the cluster. In Spark, there is a solution for this situation. It is multiple Spark session and one Spark context in this scenario. The users can have their own Spark session but have the same Spark context. In other words, they can have their own properties but share the resources of same Spark cluster. So, we can tell that Spark session is the main object in Spark. It is the entry point of each Spark application. The Spark session of one user is not visible by another user. That's the difference between Spark session and Spark context. As you can see, all dependencies are loaded now and Spark session is initiated. Before all things happens, let's check which version of Spark we will use in this tutorial. And it is Spark version 3.2.1. Now, let's load the data we will use in our machine learning model. You can load your data in any way you want. I'm using OS package from Python, which will help to define a path to a data file. From here, I'm specifying data file with absolute path, which pointing to the data folder. So, let's load our data to Spark data frame spark.read.csv and our data file data.csv Don't forget to add infer schema and header arguments as true to data reading function. What I am curious about is data schema. Let's check it. We are printing it right here. As you can see from the output, we can check the data types for all features in our dataset. Here from the schema list, we can see integer, double and string data types for our features. So, let's print how exactly our Spark data frame is look like. Three rows of data is enough right now. You can check your features one by one, do manipulate with this data as you want. What is very important to mention is fraud feature is our label in machine learning modeling, where we will apply classification algorithm. So is fraud could be 0 or 1 in binary classification we will have later. 
Now, let's say we made some feature engineering and now we want to select specific features we will work with. For this, we are using select method from PySpark. And between the brackets, you can list specific features you want to include. Type, amount, old balance org, new balance org, and is fraud, which is our label. Let's print how these features are look like together in our data frame. Here you go, looking good. As you can see, some features are string, while some are numerical. We will work with them shortly. For example, feature type is string, and we must use string indexer to apply one hot encoder on this. In machine learning modeling, splitting the data into train and test set is extremely important. Let's do it right now. For this, we are using random split functionality from PySpark API. You can specify split ratio as you want. For this tutorial, let it leave 0.75 and 0.25. That's it. And at the end, we have our train and test sets. Let's check how many data records has both train and test sets. 4.77 million on the training set and 1.6 million on the test sets. More than enough, very good. Now, let's take a look how our training set look like. You can see all features we have selected in preview step right here. Let's now be familiar with data types in our data. Shortly, it is dtypes. You can quickly list all dtypes of your data by dtypes method from PySpark. And here, type is string, amount feature is double, old balance org is also double, and so on and so on. What we are going to do now is group categorical and numerical features into separate feature groups. Here is for categorical features and here is for numerical features. Categorical features is a list where we collect all data types and feature names from dtypes which has data type equal to string. In our case it will be a feature type type. For numerical columns it's very simple. We iterate through data type set of our features in our training and collect those features which has data type of double and the feature name is not equal to the feature which is a label in our dataset. In our case, it is its fraud feature. For this reason, we added this AND operator in the middle. We can print our numerical and categorical features just below to be sure that everything we made correct in this step. Just finalizing our print statement and here you go. Our numerical and categorical features grouped into two separate units. That's exactly what we need to do for the next tutorial step. So, once we have organized data features into numerical and categorical groups, now we can easily apply one hot encoding for categorical ones. Here, I want to highlight few important aspects. One hot encoding should be implemented slightly different than we do it in Pandas or Scikit-Learn. We will do one hot encoding with two small steps by using string indexer which converts a single feature to index feature and after that we can directly apply one hat encoder two steps no more let's firstly check how many categories we have in the dataset for this we're using aggregation methods and from spark api we're passing count distinct as an argument and let's check it for feature type this is only one categorical feature in our dataset and the answer is 5. We have 5 unique values for feature type. We will do one hot encoding on that. By the way, let's also check what is the distribution of this feature type. We need to use group by method for checking distribution. So, we are grouping by feature type and calculate account for each value. And here you go, that's the distribution of distinct values inside feature type. Everything looks good. Now we are ready to import all required dependencies for one cut encoder. And here finally we are using Spark Machine Learning Library. 
From there, we import one hot encoder and shrink indexer dependencies. These two dependencies will help us to fully implement one hot encoding on our features. So, how string indexer and one hot encoder works? Basically, string indexer converts a single feature to an index feature. For example, let's have this categorical feature type from our tutorial. We can see five unique values for this categorical feature here. If we apply string indexer, it is assigned a numerical value to each of these five unique values we can see above. So indexes here are from 0 to 4, five distinct values at all. Then we can apply one hat encoding. This mechanism maps a categorical feature represented as a label index as we see on the right to a binary vector. So here each value of the categorical feature has its own column which represents the binary value 0 or 1 showing the exact value a specific record has. This is what you can see at the bottom data frame here. Let's start from string indexer and then we will do one hat encoding. So for string indexer we use string indexer from Spark Machine Learning. Let's get it right here and one hat encoder goes here to one hat encoder part. Okay, let's start with string indexer. We need to specify input columns and if that is x, then output columns let it be x underscore string indexer. Don't forget to add handle invalid argument right here. Small error, don't panic. I forgot to add that we need to iterate that x through the list of categorical features. Now it's look fine. Now do the same with one cut encoder. Let input columns be the result of string indexer. And we can iterate these features through the list of categorical features also. And then output columns will be x underscore one hat encoder for each categorical feature. Maybe it's quite confusing, but it will be much more clear when you see the actual data frame. As you can see, one hat encoder itself is a PySpark list object, as well as string indexer. Just checking. The next big step is vector assembling. I will try to explain how does it work and why we need it. Just quickly remember what we did so far. We made a lot. We made feature selection, split data into train and test sets, checked data types, prepared categorical and numerical features, and implemented one hat encoding with string indexer. So for vector assembling, let's firstly import vector assembler functionality from Spark API. Let's be familiar with vector assembling. In Spark, you need to transform all of your features into just one feature that is a vector. And this vector consists of all features that you want to add to your machine learning model as predictor. For example, let's have this data frame from our tutorial. Here we have one categorical feature type and numerical features. And we want to get the data into column type of double. Let's see how it looks like. Here are vector assembler features. Vector type represent the features into that specific vector type column. This is just a list of values where each value format is double and this list represents all feature values for a single data record in one place, in one list. By having string indexer, one hat encoder and vector assembler, we can to set up stages needed for machine learning pipeline. These stages will be running sequentially as you will see next in this tutorial. The first thing we need to do is to set the inputs for the assembler. Assembler input variable will be responsible for this. So we iterate this x through the numerical columns at first. Then we extend assembler input by adding one hat encoded values from the list of categorical features to it. So we have numerical columns here and we add categorical inputs into the same pocket. Let's print it. And you can see all the features we need to our machine learning classification model. Three numerical features and one encoded feature. Okay, let's have this information in the same cell as we did that procedure. We can easily assemble that vector by providing the input column and the output column. Then we have vector assemble feature column that will consist of all of those imported features into a vector type as it's required for any classification or regression problem in Spark. 
Ok, let's start vector assembling right now. For this we use vector assembler from Spark Machine Learning. And we need to pass some arguments here. The first one is input columns, which we defined in assembler input variable. The output column name, let it be vector assemble underscore features. One of the last step in this tutorial is to build a pipeline. We can do it with the help of vector assembler we have just defined previously. Spark pipeline is another high level concept in Spark that lets you build a full preprocessing pipeline and module training as well. So, in order to create a pipeline, first of all we need to set up stages for that pipeline. In our case we have three elements which must be included as elements of stages. The first one, string indexer. The second one, one hat encoder. And the last one, vector assembler which is a list of all feature values as a one feature vector. Remember, we define string indexer here. Then we specified one hat encoder right here. And lastly, vector assembler is the last one. We can print our stages to double checking. All stages in one list. Looks good. So we can move forward. As I mentioned before, stages are used to build a Spark pipeline. We use this dependency from Spark Machine Learning. And then, for our pipeline, we use pipeline method and we will set stages there. So, write stages as the single argument here. Now, we are ready to set up our machine learning model. For this we can fit our pipeline to train data. We specified train data in the first part of this tutorial right here. Come back to machine learning modeling. Let's add a comment to remember what we are doing here. Then we can to create another data frame from our test set. We want that this test set would be readable for our pipeline. So we use this transform method on our test set. Just remind, test set is unknown for the model. To build up our pipeline took about 11.5 seconds on my laptop, which uses CPU only. Quite good result. Now I want to show you how our test payload is look like for our model. Here we also select those features which are being used for training also. And the last element here is vector assembler features. As you can see, vector assembler features column is nothing more than a vector of all values from the left columns, including one hat encoder feature type. This is what vector assembler is actually do. It collects all required features values for each data record in order to be readable for machine learning Spark model as a payload. And the final part. Train the logistic regression model for classification problem. Spark Machine Learning has its built-in logistic regression functionality, which we will use in a minute. Now, construct a special data frame with features and label upon Spark Machine Learning requirements. So. Our data for validation model is that one from test set we specified right here. Here we are using PySpark functions f and passing this vector assembler features vector only. Give the alias for this features. Then for feature is fraud, let's set that here is our label. Let's quickly look how our data is look like. Here on the left is vector assembler vector with name features. On the right we have label 0 or 1. So finally let's train our Spark model on train data. So here we use dot fit our model on data for evaluation. And here you go. After almost 28 seconds we have our trained machine learning model in Spark. 
Let's check some key parameters of our model. Here you can see that we use two classes and seven numerical features at all. Now it's a fun part. You can play with model metrics or do whatever you want with this. I want to know ROC wireless first to see how good my model is. It is 0.99, which is almost perfect. Then what about precision and recall? That is easy. Here you go. That's all for this tutorial. I am appreciate time you watch this video. If you like it, please press like and subscribe to the channel. I will create more high quality tutorials shortly. See you there.